In this video, we're going to take a look at the PMC render kernel and some of the settings that are most relevant to uh, improving the quality or reducing render time or balancing both of those. Of course, the PMC kernel can be chosen by going into Octane settings and selecting it from the, the uh, menu in the kernels tab. For this video, I'm using the robot and pilot 01.c4d scene. And you can see light is coming through this giant magnifying glass and it's hitting the surface right here, creating this caustic light pattern that you see. Now, of course, we have our max samples, which tells Octane how long you want this to render before it stops calculating. So this is balanced with the other quality settings. And of course, we also have our depth settings, which we've discussed in the previous videos. So we're just going to focus on the ones that are most important to working with the PMC kernel. The PMC kernel is the most physically accurate kernel in Octane for Cinema 4D, uh, and it excels at scenes that have uh, strong caustic light patterns and caustic reflections created by light refracting through a surface or reflecting off of a surface onto another surface. It also takes the longest to render, so it should be used only in those situations that require these types of effects to be rendered at high quality. The great thing about working with this kernel is there's nothing extra that you have to do in order to get uh, caustic light patterns. All you need to do is set up your materials uh, so that they're physically accurate. So I have a specular material on the lens of the magnifying glass here, and I have a sunlight that's shining through it, and then I've chosen PMC, and thus I get this type of caustic pattern right here. The downside is, of course, that it takes a little bit longer to render than the, uh, say, the path tracing kernel, or definitely longer than the direct lighting kernel. Uh, however, the quality might be worth it. So in this video, I'm, I'm going to be editing this so we don't have to sit through watching it render every single time I make a change. So the uh, times that you see in terms of the rendering are not reflective of reality. So keep that in mind while you're watching this. The render times you experience when working with PMC, just like the other kernels, are going to depend on what's in your scene in terms of the lighting, the objects, the shading, and so on, as well as the geometry and uh, the shaders. And of course, your own particular computer setup in terms of the hardware, what kind of graphics cards you're using, etc. So let's take a look at the settings down here. Uh, exploration strength determines uh, how long the renderer uh, uses good paths before it starts to look for new paths in terms of uh, the light reaching, reflecting off the surfaces and going back into the camera. So low values are going to create a noisier image. So if I bring this down and we let it render for a few seconds, you'll probably see a bit more noise right here. So you can see it's coming in a bit noisy as it's rendering, but it doesn't look too bad. If I raise exploration strength, we should see more of a blotchy render, especially in these areas right here, and probably not as much accuracy in the caustic light pattern. So it's definitely looking blotchier. So it's really a tuning mechanism, depending on the type of lighting you have in your scene. Um, you can use it to kind of balance quality versus render time. So let's bring this back down. Maybe to a setting something like 0.39 or 0.4, just to round up. So next, let's take a look at direct light importance. So as I raise this setting, Octane is going to spend more time uh, rendering uh, problem areas or difficult areas, such as this caustic light pattern. Lower values means that it will spend more time uh, working on the areas that are in shadow. So it's kind of like, in a way, biasing your render energy as to whether you wanted to focus on problem areas or focus on areas that are in shadow. So let's bring up direct light importance. The max rejects scene determines the bias of the render. We talk about Octane being an unbiased renderer, meaning that it uses fewer uh, cheats uh, to create physically based lighting. Um, but you can actually tune this using the max rejects setting. So if you increase this, you're telling Octane to use less cheats, less bias in the rendering. And as you lower it, you can increase render speed, but you're making it less physically accurate. So in this particular scene, uh, since this is outside and not 
doesn't have a whole lot of areas in shadow. This direct light importance might not make a whole lot of difference. Um, if I bring this all the way down to a low value and then let it render for a few seconds, let's see if there's a noticeable difference. So as you can see, after letting it render for a little bit, it's not a huge difference in this particular scene. Uh, the next setting I want to talk about is caustic blur. So you can see in this scene, we still have a few fireflies here, a little bit of noise in this caustic light pattern. And we can reduce some of that by increasing the caustic blur. You just have to be careful because if you increase it too much, of course, you lose this nice kind of uh, realistic light pattern. So it's something you want to test. If I bring this up to point 0.1, we should see that the light's going to be much more spread out on the surface as it goes through the magnifier glass, and we won't see that kind of satisfying, cool-looking caustic pattern. We're just going to see a light area. But again, if it's something that you need to uh, reduce your render times and you're not that worried about having those types of effects, you can always uh, adjust the caustic blur. Of course, even just a little bit of adjustment will help to reduce some of the noise in these areas. So it's a good one to balance when you're, when you're dealing with noise and render times. So you see, bringing this down to 0 0.105, we lose that shape entirely. We just have kind of a light blotch on the cube. Uh, what if I bring this down to, say, 0 0.005? Let that render for a few seconds. So you can see with a low caustic blur, we get that nice pattern coming back and it looks more realistic. Another setting that can affect how this looks as well as the render time is the GI clamp. So by lowering this, it kind of reduces the amount of energy in the scene, uh, which can affect the way things like caustic lighting works, also uh, bounce light in shadows. So if I bring down GI clamp to like 10, you can see it renders pretty quick. We'll see how well this comes in, right? It's looking a little bit kind of diffuse. So we still get like kind of a hot spot here, but we're not getting that pattern. So let's raise the GI clamp and see what happens. I'm going to set this to say, I don't know, 10,000. So you can see a little bit noisy, but we do have our nice caustic light pattern. So these two settings can be balanced against each other to uh, work on developing quality as well as reducing render time. A radiance mode, if I turn this on, we go into this kind of clay mode where we can just see mostly the lighting without any of the shadings and reflectance. We just still do see the caustics though. So that could be useful as a diagnostic tool. Path termination power, if we increase this, it will reduce render time, but could result in noise in the darker areas within the scene. So you can see this scene by raising it, it's a little, little noisy, kind of dark over here, not as bright as it was before. So again, something you want to use depending on the scene. Uh, all of these settings are meant to allow you to do a fine uh, tune of your scene to again, maximize quality and reduce render time. Talked a little bit about parallelism in the uh, path tracing video. Work chunk size just determines how much of your system is devoted to the render. It won't affect the quality of the render, but raising this can help increase the speed. Again, it totally depends on your own particular system and setup. So that covers the basics of working with a PMC render kernel. I encourage you to take the robot and pilot scene and experiment with it. Also try it from different views to see uh, how it looks when you render the scene and especially pay attention to the caustic light patterns. In the next video, we'll take a look at working with the info channels kernel.